Hello friends and welcome to Ghostwatch. Today, finally, we are going to react to part 4 of the old woman who lived with 92 ghosts. If you haven't seen part 1, 2 and 3, go check them out before this one because I suppose this is a continuation. And this is one of the best ghost stories with a lot of compelling evidence that I have ever seen. Also, I'll be able to do something new on my normal reaction videos. I will look at 10 different compilations and pick the best one out of all 10 of them. Then make my own little compilation so we only get the best quality ghost videos on all of my reaction videos. Doesn't that sound like a good idea? I hope you're excited, because I am. But without further ado, let's check out part 4 of the old woman who lived with 92 ghosts. On February 19th, I uploaded part 3 of the woman who lived with 92 ghosts to you the did? channel. The story of Carmen, the grandmother of a subscriber named Carlos, who brought to the channel one of the best stories I have had the privilege of telling. It all started with the remodeling of a home that allowed Carlos to discover a suitcase whose contents would uncover the chilling truth that his grandmother was hiding. A story that he kept secret for extremely dark reasons that Look we at those reviewed pic in the previous- Look at these pictures, man. Look at these creepy ass ghosts that these women summoned. This old woman and her friends, they summoned these ghosts and they have documented everything, how they did it and everything. You'll see that in, in those first three parts. So go check them out if you haven't already. Segments. If look you at these pictures, the man. Videos that precede this one, I recommend that you do so. Because in this video, we dive further towards Carmen's descent into madness. Because my name is Leonore Clay, and this is the darkest the secret. Darkest secret. Today we present the old woman who lived with ninety-two ghosts. Part four. Part four. As I told you in the previous video. Carmen's story is divided into five phases. Discovery, experimentation, breakdown, descent, and consequences. The discovery phase that was covered in the previous video dealt with all the spectrums that they discovered. At this time, Godwin understood how they manifested, even though the leader of the group was Maria. During this phase, Godwin began to have more traits of a leader. Maria served as a means of contact, but Carmen planned everything else, like the manner and the triggering objects. What characterized the discovery phase? Take a look at that man. Take a look at that face. Holy moly, man! These are so awesome pictures and evidence. Even though I'm a very open-minded skeptic. I want to believe. And these pictures and this story. Is very close to make me a full-on believer. You know? Phase were passive spectra. Which did not interact with the group. However, that changes in the experimentation phase. Reading Carmen's logs, I realized a very important detail in her journey towards the paranormal, where a limit is crossed that you will have to decide how ethical it was. We will delve into this. We have seen in previous episodes how the group summons the remnants through trigger objects, objects that the group was bringing from their homes, their relatives, etc. 
They discovered that any ancient object could contain the energies of people who once gave them some value. That affection, that feeling for the object is impregnated in it, and in some way, when the person dies, its manifestation can be released. In this phase, I have grouped all the specters that were invoked in a very specific way. But before diving into detail about the reason why I have called this phase the experimentation phase, let me dwell on one detail. After Gutterman's three friends left the group, the meetings became more and more distant. Once every two months, or even a little more time passed until the logs began to show an additional name. Eutolia. This name starts to appear from now on, with no introduction or explanation. It is not described how she arrived. It is not explained if Carmen knew her from before or anything. Only the contributions that she began to give to the group are noted. Alrighty then. Animals. I'm beginning to summon animals now. Animal spirits. Let's start then with a description of the photos of this phase. A phase characterized by animals. From the beginning, I was struck by the large number of photos of animals. I don't know if, th I don't think that's just a very, very black dog and a very black cat. I'm pretty sure that those are shadow, you know, shadow creeps. Right? That's not, that's not just a black dog. That's a shadow. ...that the group managed to capture. Many cats, several dogs, and odd animals very similar to pets. According to Carlos, finding the images was quick, but linking them to each of the blodges was very difficult. Especially because the photos had no indication. You see, he's standing right by a lamp, and still... It's just a shadow. These photographic evidence in this is amazing. You know, th this is, I don't know. I think this is, uh, is this, this is, uh, I don't remember which year this is, but this, it's not easy in this time period to fake this kind of pictures, you know? It's not Photoshop or anything of which blodge they belonged to. They were loose, like everything else. Regarding Carlos's organization, I reorganized all the sessions where animals appeared, and I noticed... But also, they're old women. They wouldn't know how to do this, right? Eh? Something curious. One of the folders arranged by Carlos was called Others, and several mysterious photos appeared in it. These are all new Let evidence that I haven't seen before. What does this mean to you? What the Gunner hell is that? did not find significance in them, so he left them aside. But I think I understand what they are. I believe they are the trigger items for some of the animal spectres uh, that could be, the group yeah. summoned. That could look like a dog's ball, you know? It can't be distinguished very well. But this seems to be a pet's collar. I don't know what that shadow in the back is. In this one, it looks clearer. It seems to be someone holding an animal collar very closely. Maybe that shadow in the background belongs to one of the members of the group. Could be, yeah. And there is this. Just a dirty ball. Perhaps a pet's toy. Most animal photos have simple logs. They simply describe the appearance of the animal, but do not detail the triggering object. At least, not at the beginning. Not the first sessions in this category. There are around 20 photos. I think it is not necessary to go into detail, since some are very similar and simple, and there are no things that differ from the previous session. 
The Eutolia Road is also not described. Just the same as always. Eutolia takes the photos and Maria invokes the ghosts. However, there is something here that caught my attention and that is how they achieved these invocations. Yeah. Do not forget that each invocation requires trigger objects. How did they manage to find objects that belong to so many animals? Furthermore, Good the logs that describe these apparitions have consecutive dates. That is to say, there were almost 20 sessions where all of them focused on bringing animals. Where did they get these things from? In all the logs of the discovery phase, it was described very well who the triggering object belonged to and how they obtained it. Everything was identified and they had a clear personal story. Old Ball is all that is said on one of the sheets. Usually, it would say, found at Autolia's house, or something similar. Yeah. No reference is made to owning a pet in any blodge. My theory about how they obtain these elements gives the name to this category. Look at this image again. Do you notice a peculiarity about this trigger object? It looks like a tennis ball, but do you yeah. notice how worn out it is? I do. Not only is it worn out, it it's seems to be if. covered in dirt, as if they had dug it up and taken. You know, see there. They're spread all around. You know these flakes that are on off the balls. These are very. It's an old ass ball, man. Right. Get a photo of it directly. Of all the animal photos I organized in this phase, this is the most interesting. Carlos placed this photo next to a lodge where a child was described. However, analyzing it carefully, I believe what we are seeing here is a headless dog. There is a log where such a spectrum is clearly described. A headless dog? This can't be a dog, yeah? Is this huge? Is it because it's standing on the chair here? I don't know. Or is it this thing here? Then what the hell is this? I don't know. Maybe the Leonora will explain. <laughs> In this blodge, Carmen tells us how the new member, Eutolia, prepared herbal water and introduced the ball into it. And then Maria began the ritual. A few minutes later, the sound of the animal's steps began, very similar to other invocations of this style. But when the moment arrived and the animal was seen, it was something like this. The animal seems disoriented, as if it knew its head was missing. It will stand on two legs everywhere, like when a dog goes out to meet its owner and holds itself up on the furniture or on the walls, as if trying to stretch itself to sniff when it can't, since it has no head. It's a dog without a head. Holy toaster, man. This is the first time I've seen a ghost passing through things like in stories. Could pass through chairs and furniture. I suspect it was a Doberman. According to statements from each member, none of us were terrified by the dog's appearance. But we still felt a strange fear as if it were capable of doing something to us. I think it's a they, it is very they think it was a sinister spirits of these animals. What she adds at the end, they had already had dozens of sessions, even with extremely mysterious creatures, like that strange dog. Do you what do you guys think? Do, do you think it looks like a headless dog? I don't really see it. Comment down below if you see it. Remember that. And maybe it can make me understand what you're looking at. The deep and inexplicable fear that they had as a group when invoking this. And it is this other indication that makes me think that the trigger object that began to be used in this phase 
were not like the others due to the change in the energy during these sessions and how the atmosphere became much more upsetting. Personally, I think they were removing trigger objects from graves. Ah. Oh. Apparently that could they be, started yeah. in some animal cemetery. We can conclude this from all the objects that were investigated during this period. Only animals. How morbid is that? Digging up animals' graves to get their toys? That's morbid. That's stretching it too far, in my opinion. Trigger objects, and usually always like this, full of dirt. But apparently, this changed shortly after. What do you see here? Just a photo of a bicycle, right? Yeah. The members do not specify who this object belongs to, who lent it, or where they got it from. It just says that this thing, this bicycle, could ride itself through every corner of the house. In every photo you see, the bike was moving slowly on its own. The curious thing about this session is that... How can you see that from a photo that is driving slowly? Batterman expresses her disappointment in not being able to see the young woman in a dress who is referred to throughout this session. Apparently, in addition to the triggering object, which was the bike, they had an old faded photo of a young woman next to her bicycle. Within all the files shared by Carlos, I did not find any photo similar to what is described here. But according to the law, it was a girl with brown hair. Now this bike is not driving, it's, it's on the stand, right? White skin and a long gray or bluish dress. Garmin writes that the entity that was riding the bicycle never let itself be seen, but that in some photos you can always see something it on the bike. It is a shadow, yeah. They think it's the girl. After hours of researching these logs, I believe... And this photo, the bike doesn't look like it's leaning up against anything, right? It's too far away from this to be leaning in. I don't know. What do you guys think? After Tell me in comments of researching down below. these logs, I believe there was a point where they left the animal cemetery and began to steal things from the roadside crosses. You know, those small graves that are located on the side of a road, right where people died. Why do I conclude this? It turns out that there is a log further ahead where Carmen tells Eutolia that it is her turn to visit the furthest road cross. That's all the reference I could find that hints to this. Look the at other this reason. Look at the shadow, man. Is that a headless dog, though? I see it's a, a shadow of something, but. I don't see it's a headless dog. Is that since they began to invoke the animals in this consecutive manner, the demonstrations have become increasingly aggressive. Before, the entities hardly interacted with the members. In this phase, they do. And there is evidence of this. Garmin indicates that the bicycle rode around the house in a slow and clumsy manner, but always stayed on both wheels. Suddenly, it passed near a sturdy piece of furniture with glass doors, and they claimed that without touching it, the doors exploded into a thousand pieces, and the contents inside also exploded. Everything what? flew with atrocious aggression. Eutolia Lomiranda was seriously injured with a deep cut on her eyebrow. Garvin and her tell us about all those tiny crystals embedded in their legs. Deep wounds were left after not only the glass of the furniture exploding, but also the vases and figurines inside it. Seems as if something had exploded inside the furniture. Everything went flying. The noise was like that of a bomb. Garvin writes in that log, the only one who was not injured, perhaps because she was not nearby, 
was Maria. A couple of months later, they would get together again. But something would change here. Now, Maria would establish the connection, achieve the invocation, and leave. I theorized that after the explosion, Maria did not want to be present in the group's experimentations, which ended up leaving them with the beginning of the most terrifying experiences of all. The logs once again undergo an adjustment. This one, for example, has several things written around it. There are other apparitions that were recorded after the first time they invoked her, and perhaps it is due to what they did when Maria was not there. What the hell? It's clearly a hand, right? Or is it? You only see two fingers of it. And that hand looks dead. Is this a face in the background? It's one eye, the other eye, and the nose? I don't know. This Holy was the crap. triggering object for the next specter. Can you figure out what it is? Looks if like you a dead have hand. an idea, leave it in the comment box. Since I still cannot say exactly what appears in this photo, what is clear is the entity that was involved. That is clearly a dead hand. Holy air fryer, dude. What's, what's going on with this finger, though? That looks weird. According to what Carmen writes, they first heard some noises in one of the furniture when they went to see. The hand waved desperately, like someone drowning in the sea. It broke everything around the area where it appeared. It seemed to come only from between the furniture and the walls. This is the second time we have seen a remnant with injuries in their demonstration. It looks like a rotting arm, you know? A decomposing arm. The log of this demonstration is the first to have its frequency overwritten in a space. Garmin specified in the log that this was a frequent remnant. He appeared on several other occasions. It is not detailed what he did at other times, or maybe it is written in a general way. Perhaps what appeared here describes the behavior in more than one session. Carlos added a document to the folder of this remnant. He is confident that after seeing the photos, an atrocious fear invaded his body because Carlos remembers that when very young, while he was sleeping, he felt that something grabbed his foot tightly. He always thought it was a dream, but from but the wasn't. beginning, he distrusted that idea since his foot had remained sore until the next day. And now that he sees the photo, he fervently believes that it was this specter that perhaps manifested itself yeah. from the surface of his bed. Oh, imagine. Imagine having experience in that and later seeing these photos of this decomposing hands and arms. What? Do you remember this photo? What you see on the screen corresponds to the photograph of the remnant called the priest. We showed it in the first video and its description. Garmin had put Strange remnant. It's a being with an always diffuse face. Bald, who wears clothes like a monk from the 1400s. The log. I don't read so fast, so that's why I'm pausing. <laughs> Be sure I get it all. Associated with this remnant is important because here, for the first time, ancient manifestations begin to be seen in its photos. This is the priest's triggering object, and it is here that Carmen believes and knows 
that the specter of the boyfriend seems to be seen behind. Do you remember that remnant? Here it appears reflected in a window that overlooks the garden. This log is curious because it details how the new member, Eutolia, was apparently in charge of carrying out experiments with both the triggering objects and the specters. For example, it is specified that this cross was bathed in a mixture of vinegar, tea, and bay leaves using a type of palm leaf bouquet. This process was repeated several times in the future. Do you have any idea of the use of this and what it means? Nope. Be that as it may, it was by doing this kind of ritual that this being was involved. The priest. Look at this picture evidence, man. This is not a, a human standing here. You can see, uh, I know the background is also blurred as well, but not like this. Right? This remnant is always seen looking at us from the darkness, as if judging us. It never moves, it does not say a word. Natolia tried to approach it, but she felt a threat, an inconceivable fear that prevented that from happening. In her words, she mentions that something inside her told her that getting closer would hurt her, like someone approaching a snake. Look at that distorted face. It only manifests itself when there is a lot of darkness. We only manage to see it on two occasions. Here and in session 72. This is the photo from session 72. When they had summoned another spectrum. Carlos has no memory of this being. He had never seen or felt it. Not like this. The next spectrum. Carmen describes this entity as the stain, a unique remnant. I assume she meant it only appeared once. The trigger object is crossed out, deleted as if they wanted to hide it from anyone else who had access to these documents. Gadman writes that this being is very difficult to describe. The sensation uh. that occurred in all of them was very difficult to describe. A horrible feeling of desperation, such that they seriously thought about leaving this whole investigation forever finished. When this creature was invoked, a screeching sound was produced, like someone scraping a blackboard with their nails. Uh. but multiplied by a thousand times. According to what Garmin writes, the pain in her... It's as if it floated in the air and twisted dozens of times per second, as if it wanted to change shape. It's a shapeshifter. Tolia noticed three legs. I noticed that a head wanted to appear from between her shoulders, but it never managed to fully manifest itself. It just felt a pain. The screeching sound only be combined with the cracking of dozens of bones. How how terrifying must that be to experience that? And hearing that noise. I wouldn't sleep that night. And the next night. And the next night. And the next night. And the next night. Or the next night. Compare to the horror her eyes saw. Uh, stop that sound, damn it.
Uh. Can you imagine what they experienced that night? No. It was so horrifying yeah. that Eutolia fainted. But that is not all. When all this invocation ended, there was a consensus. They all agreed that they felt overwhelming depression. A feeling of loneliness, sadness, of wanting to escape from their bodies. Of wanting to escape from their bodies. Didn't want to exist here, this place. In our bodies. It was a strange sensation. I had never felt like not wanting to exist. That is what Garmin adds at the end of the log. This spectrum finalizes what I determine the experimentation phase, a phase where they experienced different forms of invocation and even used herbs and other types of ritual elements during the sessions. The separation of this phase is clear because in the next phase, the descent phase, the specters change. Almost all of them are hostile, dangerous, and are marked by a very interesting event. The death of Maria. Something happened here. Something broke. Something occurred in the group after this. But we will find out in the next episode. Oh yeah, because there'll be a fifth episode. Because my name is Leonore Clay, and this was The Darkest, Darkest Secret. Secret. So what do you guys think? Do you think this is a real story? And what do you think about these photo evidence? I hope you all looked at part one, two, and three. Because there are so many, so many, so many picture evidence. And it's so compelling, you know. I don't really know what to make out of it, but... It seems pretty believable. Right? And I don't know, really... What I mean with the woman who lived with 92 ghosts. Because they needed these trigger objects to... To summon them. But we will see. Because there will be another episode. At some point. Maybe. When she got older. She couldn't get rid of all these spirits. You know. But please guys. If you don't want to miss. Part number 5. Of my reactions. Please. Leave a like. And subscribe. And hit the notification bell. So you don't miss it. Or all my other. Reaction videos. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.